What's up guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video guys, we're gonna be taking a look at Chainlink and the recent dump that it had down to around about $15. Now recently in a previous video, I said Chainlink would reach this $20 target, but I said be careful because we could have a pullback to 15 or maybe even $10 at the worst case scenario. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Chainlink, doing some Chainlink analysis. We're also gonna be having a look at why Chainlink could potentially be in a bubble and this is actually a really important tweet uh, and series of tweets. You do not want to, want to miss these tweets. Um, we are then going to take a look at some Bitcoin price analysis and take a look at where the Bitcoin price could be do going in the next few days if we can in fact maintain this level right here. Then we're going to be taking a look at Warren Buffett buying gold and how this may push Bitcoin to $50,000. So all that good stuff and more coming up in today's video. Sit back, relax and get ready for the video. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me again. I do really appreciate that. If you haven't already dropped a like on today's video, then definitely scroll down, tick that like button, and don't forget to subscribe and tick the notification bell so you get notified when I post my next updates. And as always, guys, drop your comments down below right now if you want to enter to win the Ledger Nano S storage device or the equivalent in Bitcoin. So we can see Chainlink has had an absolutely ridiculous pump of around 100 or pretty much 200% in around 20 days, which is ridiculous. And some of these gains are crazy. However, now Chainlink has started to have a little bit of a correction. We've seen uh, a, around about a 30% drop in the last three days up to, we're probably sitting at about 25 to 20% drop right now. And Chainlink could potentially be forming something which it previously did before it broke out even more. However, we're gonna be talking about some warnings. Um, if you are buying a Chainlink, if you are holding Chainlink, you may want to follow up later later in today's video. Right here, Chainlink came up, it went, it came down, consolidated in this kind of wedge formation, and then broke out massively to the upside. Again, we came up, reached a new all-time high, which we previously did here, and then we are consolidating down. Could this mean Chainlink is about to have a massive breakout up here to above $20 and reach new, new all-time highs? Well, it very much could, and I don't think that's uh, far from the truth if we take a little bit of a look more into it. So right now, guys, if we actually bring up some indicators, I'm actually going to bring up the MACD and the Stotch RSI. And let's take a look at exactly what is happening here on the daily chart for um, Chainlink. So we can see here the uh, MACD is actually somewhat um, cooling off a little bit right here, which we can see could potentially flip to the bearish side in the next few days. That could potentially happen on the Stotch RSI. We are seeing it uh, below the 20 level, which is very interesting. And this could either mean one of two things. Either we're going to continue to fall down to this $10 level or like in the past when we did see it go down to these levels uh, like right here. Uh, again, right here, we could be seeing a big breakout coming. So realistically, I think it's healthy that we are seeing a pullback on Chainlink. I think it's very normal to see a pullback. And if you were interested in holding Chainlink for long term, you should probably take a look at buying these dips. As people always say, buy the dips. Um, however, one thing about Chainlink is that it is very, very, very overinflated the price right now. So a pullback like we are having now of around 30%, it's very much needed. And I think that is uh, extremely important for Chainlink before it makes new all-time highs again. Do I think we're gonna test $20 again? Most likely, yes, I do think we are. Might it be in the next few days after we bounce from this um, $15 level again? It could well be, yes, but I wouldn't be surprised, guys, if we saw further downsides to Chainlink. And if even if we came back down to at least this um, $11, $12 level right here, and maybe even this $10 level right here. Just keep that in the back of your mind. If you're holding for the long term, it shouldn't really matter too much. If we do see a pullback all the way down here, then you can simply just stack um, even more Chainlink if that's what you were interested in. But overall, this is looking um, fairly interesting. It lo it's looking like it's slowing down a little bit, which is fairly obvious um, given the price consolidation here of around a 20 to 30% uh, drop in the price. That's fairly normal. Again, we saw a healthy price correction here before more moves to the upside, uh, and we could potentially be on to see something like that in the future. So guys, if we do actually go ahead and take a look at the four hour chart, we can see two very clear um, kind of wedges right here, which did in fact lead to the breakout right there. And again, coming down and that could in fact lead to a breakout right here. One reason why I think this could definitely lead to a breakout right here is simply because of this support level here at $15. We've, we came down and we tested it two, three times right now, and we have in fact bounced from it. If we do in fact test it again, this could be the catalyst we need to go back up and test that $20 level. 
um, I don't wouldn't be surprised if we saw a major move from Chainlink. Um, honestly, it is uh, fairly susceptible to major moves right now, uh, and just be careful because it is very volatile. Giving either either to the upside or to the downside, it is a very volatile asset, and you should definitely keep that in mind before trading it. If you guys were interested though in learning how to trade cryptocurrency to a more advanced level, I do actually have my Bitcoin Blue Crypt Mega Sale for a limited time only. Only 12 days remaining now, guys. I really have like one or two sales a year. So probably this is the only uh, sale again for this year. So if you were interested in learning more about cryptocurrency, furthering your education, I do have three courses, a beginner course, an advanced course, and a leverage course. Um, so there's something there suited for your needs. And as many people say, uh, an investment in yourself and your own ed education can actually pay way more than any other altcoin out there or anything at all. Um, so definitely check the links out down below and don't forget to uh, claim your discount for the Bitcoin Blueprint. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this thread right here from Crypto Whale. And this is a really important thread. And I do want you to keep in mind that this thread does have a bearish bias. So if you are very bullish on um, Chainlink, you may not want to watch or you may want to watch because you may simply want to open your eyes a little bit. I'm not saying I agree with this. I just wanted to bring it to you so you could have uh, and form your own opinion. So he says, for months, uh, we've watched Link grow exponentially. Its price has shot well beyond its intrinsic value through DeFi hype and greed. Uh, this, pri this I pretty much agree with. This thread will touch on some points I think all holders should read before falling victim to the bubble. First, let's discuss how bubbles are formed. A bubble is where investors buy an asset not for its fundamental value, but because they plan to resell at a higher price to the next investor. Now, this is something very interesting. They don't buy... The, an asset for its value, they buy to simply make money. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And when we are seeing the, uh, prices on Chainlink up here of $20, keep in mind, some people bought Chainlink below $1, way, way, way below $1. So if we are actually seeing um, pretty much a 20x on Chainlink already, keep in mind, some of these investors are going to be wanted to be uh, dumping their bags. And to who? Well, that could potentially be on you. Um, I'm going to cover several aspects here. Um, first of all, exploitation is a process past data into the future on the same basis. If prices have risen at X rate in the past, prices will continue to rise at X rate forever. This causes investors to overbid risky assets um, in an attempt to capture the same return rates. So just because this is basically saying just because Chainlink has gone up 200% in the last 30 days, that has no bearing on the future price of Chainlink. It, just because it's gone up 200%, it doesn't mean it's going to go up another two or 300%. For example, um, if you are on a roulette table and the number 12 comes up just three times in a row, for example, the number 12 comes up three times in a row, the number 12 coming up again for the fourth time has just no bearing. It doesn't matter if that number came up three times previously. It really doesn't matter for the future. Now, that's a little bit of a far-fetched example, but that's kind of um, like what I'm, I'm thinking. Herding is an aspect of, uh, aspect of a behavioral finance. And this, uh, it is a tendency for humans to do um, what the rest of the herd is doing, even as, if as an individual, they know what they're doing is irrational. The dot-com boom is another example of herding. This is basically saying... Um, if you're seeing a lot of hype about Chainlink, people are telling you to buy it, people are, are bragging about their gains, you want to ha go ahead and have this behavioral herd finance uh, kind of aspect and look at it and you go ahead and jump in and buy Chainlink at, for example, $17, $18, something in that region. Again, celebrities will be shilling the project, um, the mania phase, media shout outs and far wide uh, from far and wide, average investors catch wind that something big is happening and they want in. The price starts to go up and an inexperienced investor thinks it will keep going up forever. Your parents are now listening to the band. And that's what it basically says. And it's basically this chart, we've seen this chart um, with the Bitcoin logo on here many, many times. We have the optimism, belief, euphoria, complacency, anxiety, denial, panic. And then it's like uh, coming coming back up here. It's it basically saying, oh, this could be it again. This could be optimism again. And that's basically the cycle of a market. A complete denial. Um, this has been uh, most link holders. They refuse to sell because holding in the past was successful. 
just because holding from $1 to $20 was successful, it doesn't necessarily mean that holding from $20 to $100 will also be successful. So just keep that in the back of your mind. No exit strategy. This is a huge one, not only for Chainlink, but for altcoin and Bitcoin investors as well. You have to have a price in mind where you want to exit. Let's say, for example, you want to buy a family home, you want to buy yourself a car, you want to pay off your student loans, whatever it may be. Keep that number in the back of your head and just think, okay, when Bitcoin hits this price, it may be 30K, maybe 100K, it may be a million dollars, it may be 20K, whatever it may be, and stick to it. Because when the price is shooting up, it's going to be a big, big thing to actually, um, a big, big difference from actually saying it and actually doing it. So keep that in the back of your mind. Marketing, again, um, they go on a lot about marketing. Um, let me get back to this thread. Uh, coin supply concentration. Considering 70% of the coin supply is held by nine whales, it's likely that they will begin dumping on investors once they are ready to take profits. You don't want to be buying or holding during this. It happened to most other coins in the past. And this is basically what he's saying. Um, let me know down in the comments, guys, if you believe what the crypto whale is saying and if you actually think some of what he's saying is true. I definitely believe in some of his points, um, for example, having a price target, um, that the price has grown exponentially and it's pretty much beyond its value because of DeFi hype. Um, I do believe with a lot of the things he is saying. Um, however, I still hold Chainlink. I've got no real intentions of selling anytime soon, um, but definitely let me know what you think down below. Let's now take a look at the Bitcoin price, guys, and see what exactly is going on. If you didn't see yesterday's video, I basically said that if Bitcoin does in fact break this area down here, we could see a Bitcoin price coming all the way down here to $11,000. Uh, we have bounced from this price multiple times again we are coming down and potentially testing this i would love to see a bounce here back up to this eleven thousand nine hundred dollar range uh, and potentially go on to test this 12k range up here i think that would be absolutely great for bitcoin again i'm still bullish on bitcoin unless i see bitcoin break this level right here i have no real reason to not be bullish on Bitcoin. And as many people say, guys, trend is your friend. And we are definitely trending upwards. There's no two ways about that. So Warren Buffett said uh, buying gold may push Bitcoin to $50,000. This is a really interesting article, guys. Berkshire Hathaway, the $503 billion conglomerate um, led by Warren Buffett, sold Goldman Sachs for Canadian gold company Barrick Gold. Um, basically, it says, what's Buffett's decision to enter the gold position? Um, over banks shows about Bitcoin. Buffett's decision to completely close Berkshire's position on Goldman Sachs, it suggests Buffett is not comfortable in betting big on the banking industry in the long term. Why doesn't he just buy Bitcoin? Um, Buffett purchased a single stock in Barrett Gold whose stock has reflected that of gold um, in most of 2020. Max Kaiser believes Buffett's gold investment could benefit Bitcoin. Global 100, uh, 100 trillion fund management biz is less than 1% invested in gold. With Buffett now moving into gold, expect, uh, expect global allocation of 5% AU minimum. Implies $5,000 gold, expect 1% uh, BTC global allocation. 1 trillion implies $50,000 Bitcoin, um, except PTJ ups to 10%. Um, and this is the, the price of uh, Bitcoin right here. We can see currently at around $11,700. Um, coming down here, it says a former LS Equities portfolio manager said today it was announced Berkshire Halfway uh, just brought its first gold stock ever. The reason are self-apparent at this point. Just in case you're wondering what the coming years are going to look like for Bitcoin, this was exactly what Buffett was saying on gold in 1988. Bitcoin has so, shown some correlation with the precious metal as of late. Although Bitcoin has outperformed gold since April, the price trend between gold and BTC has shown some correlation, which we can see right here. And um, we've got BTC in black uh, and uh, gold obviously in gold right here. And we can see they had the drop here back in March corrected um, to the upside, actually had a good pump like we know, came up to the all-time highs at around uh, recent all-time highs of this year, about 12K, and gold again had the all-time high recently uh, break above 2K, which was really nice to see. The simultaneous rally of Bitcoin and gold since the global market crash in late March hints that more investors are starting to consider Bitcoin as a store of value. And I don't see why Warren Buffett is not just buying some Bitcoin. Let me know down below if you think Buffett is secretly stacking those sats and buying Bitcoin. So guys, thanks for watching today's video. I do really appreciate it. Again, don't forget to check out the Bitcoin Blueprint sale for a limited time only. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.